a little quieter on that map, right? A little quieter on Nuke for sure. Getting stymied by Gokushima on the other side, but uh, I want to see more. Overpass is a map that rewards Oppers, generally speaking. I want to see what Moon's going to do here. I think that Moon Gokushima battle is going to be a whole lot of fun to watch here, Cole. Yeah, I hope to see a little bit more back and forth between those two here. That's going to be necessity if they want to try and finish the job. If they want to try and continue the slower bracket run and cause more upsets in this qualifier here that they've already taken some serious scalps they've already taken um some names so to continue that and try and do so up against fours would just be another name on their, their list which i think they're looking to cross off right now they will start on the ct side which i think is very nice for them it's good to see uh, at least on their side of things that they get to start off on the defense and that's what they do best right there wow again no 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 patch notes are read by this team <laughs> only be swinging always be swinging i mean i think it's still gonna be powerful right yeah, they're like adjusted yeah. peakers but <laughs> peakers still kind of broken I mean, peakers it. was certainly still a thing even back in go so Ali, oh. what you got yo for us yo because this is looking yo like a bomb plant unless the short control can come through they could actually battle up oh they're going to do it they're going a they're going a so it's all on Sawalio. he gets overwhelmed there Ooh. but there's a second player i didn't even realize from the map no wonder they didn't realize and yet still the cacophony of frags does come through ruby tried to collapse on that pack of players and forza they're up to the task tanir in particular up to the task in a big way yeah only one kill there from the the graffiti player right and in a perfect position to, to get some free shots. He took the uh, silencer off as well, which was interesting. Assert dominance. For the, uh, yeah, going for the wanna see, but unfortunately doesn't quite have the backup. I mean, 4v5, I think just really good decision making from fours. I like the quickness and the way they aggress forward up graffiti. That's what they needed here and looking for more there. Again, a result. His resurgence saved them on nuke, I will say. You had Gokushima as like a, a one-man army throughout that entire first half, but when you did have that secondary presence of result, finding success in the second half, it, it just completely changed the game. So Ruby playing wicked far back at this point. Not used to seeing that for this team. Oh, but they're stacking. They're stacking the right side. Ooh, this could get frisky. There's plenty of time for Forza to bail out, but they're not keeping any connector presence, which is usually one of those indicators that they might rotate down. No, they're just going to come into the hit. <laughs> this is going to get real weird here, Cole. Here comes the hit. Here comes the move. Everybody's here. Let's get a brawl going. Not clearing the first player out towards the sign. There's one, but it's the one-two punch. This should be the punish. The truck player not fighting off of it. And well, that might let the team down. Soalio afraid to commit there, and in doing so, the dominoes come tumbling on down. Forza rock into the stack and make disassembling it look like a child's play. Yeah, I had the right idea there, but like you said, it just seemed like there was too much fear in turning that corner. You, you need to play off each other's contacts, so when the first player strikes, it needs to be that swing from truck, and then bam, all of a sudden you're in a 5e or 4v3, uh, and, and it might set some hesitation in the force, but never ran into that problem because uh, there's a slight lack of presence, a slight lack of peeking this off Ooh, angle the could be good on the boost. How, how's he passed it? He passed right past the boost. They didn't see him? He was playing on the off angle there, so I think you swing into it. It's more of that, that peeker's advantage, but there you go. Dex is... Gonna find a nice 1D great there to defend up against this pressure. Selter still chasing things down. There's so many players in the pit. But they all go down with ease. Once again, Forza rocky right into the stack, and it gets a little frisky. But ultimately, I mean, they're looking pretty comfortable here on the start. And this is the first good start to a map we've seen from them, right? This is the first. They, they lost both pistols map one, lost six rounds as a result of that. Map two, they lose the force buy. They lose three rounds immediately after that as well. I mean, this might not be so close of a series if Forza had any clean starts on the previous map. They did it. Okay, they did it in the second half of Mook. And then they ran like nine rounds in a row or some crazy number. So, I'm just saying. Maybe the pistol already tells us what's going to happen here, Cole. I don't think there's a lot of room for error here as well for uh, Ruby. I don't think they can afford too many CT side round losses and already going down 03 is a bit of a scary kickoff. This is where we're seeing some of that uh, more stabilized, calm, cool, and collected calling coming through. 
uh, uh, absolute classic when it comes to Jerry on the calling as well. And so I think that uh, Shelfie had a lot to learn from this map. It used to just be a staple for them. And it seems like they're kind of similarly playing out that style. Heavy connector presence in these rounds for fours, which was such a staple for this team back in the day. And I, I like hmm. to see them keep that up here, even though it's a new IGL. I mean, new IGL learned from the old IGL, right? Nurtured by him. It was uh, Shalfi and Rezald who were part of that old team. And everyone else knew pieces coming on in. I think there might have been a tiny bit of overlap with Tinier, but I don't think so. I don't really remember the timeline there. But as it is, this is, at this point, very much Shalfi's team. Has been for a while now. Oh, yeah. And he's shown, uh, yeah, I mean, massive justification for the faith that they placed in him. The fact that he's able to call and still frag at a fairly high level. Impressive. Dex destroyed by that flashbang. Sawalio might have saved him for a moment, but not nearly enough. This bomb's going down. This should be a save. Yeah, it's just a three on four, but I don't know, Cole. You fancy their chances back in? Yeah, just go ahead and dip one out. That Oh, they turn the corner. Though. The op tries to just kind of walk on in. That's not going to work out. Now you probably want to actually gra gather that op, maybe. That's what they're waiting for. Yeah, they're, they're trying for it here, but they're not going to let them have it here. In fact, even Seltor on the other side of the map waiting to catch him on the inbound. There's a freebie for Assault. I think he might have surfaced through that smoke. And look, he just disposes of it. Great little bit of diligence done. Winter, not any opportunity to even shoot his gun in this round. And fours onto a fourth right there. Just one great flash and some great space taking. And that's all that they need to ease their way into the site. I, I, it just looks like, again, there's going to be some missing pieces here out of the gates from Ruby. Yeah, I mean, this is... a result of a lack of reps. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. You know, bang on there. Uh, it just looks like a team that's not prepared for the map. This looks like a team that, that hasn't played a lot of overpass. And, well, we know they haven't played any overpass from what we can tell. Not really sure how long this uh, roster of players have been playing together. Even, really. Um... And this is just, it's a very tough map to make work without coordination, without preparation. I would have said the same about Nuke, but they made that work somehow, so. It teaches me. Yeah, I know. It was, it was, I mean, impressive. I think a lot of that resulted from a really good CT side. They just transferred it into that second half, but look at that. A couple of kills. Rolling on through there. They do have a man advantage, although how long can they maintain it? Barrel should be seen. The cool machine didn't register it. And he doesn't Woo! get the flick. He nearly had time, but the Deagle from range is actually the one that kills him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Giving up silly rounds like this when you started off so strong for us, huh? But it seems like that might be exactly what they're doing. There are still limitations here for Ruby. Yes, it's a 2v4, but they don't have any utility to speak of. One smoke on Moon? Bomb will need to be retrieved. No one's gone forward to collect it, so Selter will be okay to do this. But now, what do they actually want to do to try and reestablish control? 50 seconds. That should be plenty of time. But a lot of ground to cover. 40 seconds. A lot of real estate to clear out, so they're just going to leave bathrooms alone. They're going to go out towards long. They're going to try and rock in towards this site. And first point of contact, it's going to be winter. Moon to play with him. 25 seconds. I'm starting to get nervous. They might just be bailing out of this. They got some nades to execute. They are. Yeah, they didn't get the peak. They're just pulling the plug. Conservative. Conservative, but understandable, perhaps. Selter can drop guns. They'll have a fine buy in the next. Don't want to give over that op. First body taken out. Can't die after time. Can't die after time. Really can't die after time. And they will not do so. There's only so much hunting that Ruby can afford to do as well. So they, they play it pretty safe on the other end of things. Nice round though to pick up early. I mean, you, you were asking the question here of what the history is. These these players all come from different pieces, at least when it comes to like HLTV officials. But I mean, the yeah. last team for uh, Dex, I believe, was Cloud9 Academy. And then Swalio, VP Prodigy. Winter was a team called Temp. So... I mean, this really so it seems is like a, a fresh team who's getting their first HLTV official on Overpass. Yeah, it seems like a freshie. I mean, it's hard to even know, like, 
It's just a pug. Did they just pick up for this qualifier? If so, man, it's been it's been brilliant. Already caused some massive upsets. Sh shook up the bracket. I could have a chance for even further damage assault. Uh oh, old oh. 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 <laughs> He gets gifted a little alarm bell there and a freebie off the back of it. But Silter sends that spam right on back. Follows the tracers. And that's going to be a lost player there. And also, Tanir has timing towards this B-side. There's a chance for even more devastation on this B-side. Fast play in. They've got the space. But with this double short control, this could be huge. First kills found from Dax, so that holding on to this in the post plant, even getting the bomb down is going to be a nightmare. That was wow, uh, questionable for Moon. <laughs> Extremely questionable. They're trying to assemble a boost, but it's going to take so long that at this point, that was just a waste of time. One battle forward. If they could win this fight with Winter, that would make this post plant so much better. Winter, though, gets the first, not the second. Now, yeah, stronger position to battle from to defend from and the kills come through nicely done there from forza some questionable decisions again in the retake from ruby showing perhaps the inexperience for this map swinging through the heaven smoke with the op not even out is um a, a bold shall we say yeah i mean heard the execution heard the utility and even running through that smoke what is the best case scenario there but uh you know in doing so does lose even more success on this defense here. Great read from Tanir to make that play, that sort of proactivity. Take that space just in time, but Moon All right, looking Moon. for a bit of redemption. And we'll find it on a result. Tanir back to these aggressive antics towards B, though. He is taking a whole lot of space. Fearless. Fearless indeed. Smoke pops. Well, boosty boost. How's the calm around that we've been, we've grown to expect, right? No shenanigans in this one. There's no utility from Ruby is the thing. They've got a flash and two smokes at this point. So aggression, not what they're really hoping for. There's also no kit. So keep an eye on that for a post plant. Moon? What do you just hear? Hop around. This is the shot. He's in the corner. Uh oh. Preemptive smoke to try and give himself some cover. Extinguishes the molly. That was good response. And he's actually away. And as they try and swing to punish, that's a blunder. Winter came in to support his upper. So Forza, they missed the opportunity to punish this up. It was a prime chance. And in doing so, actually lose more. And now Tanir is making crazy plays. They need a they need a crazy play. They need Celta to do something. The bomb's not even with him. Twenty seconds. They're not doing this. Nah, another save. For they already have a decent T side established here, so if they give themselves more gun rounds and get you know a little bit of extra, if they can tie things up even, yeah, that that'd be fantastic. So these conservative save calls here, they, they don't come as too much of a surprise given the start. But some of these rounds here, they, they are. Uh, I would say lacking a little bit of direction here. They've got good early map control. They just can't seem to formulate the executes in time. And honestly, that, that can kind of tend to be true on this map for any team. Any good overpass team is going to run into these hurdles. You walk into an oppie, you walk into a late smoke, and it's really hard to break past it right there, as we've seen coming through from fours. So second round loss, again on that A side, kind of just getting shut down. And Moon with the AWP... Even if it doesn't lead to it, like a big multi-kill, it's kind of being a thorn in their side right now. bit of time here but we're back into the fun back into the action back into the excitement and i for one very excited what are we gonna get what do we got a 
We got Sawalio on the monster push. Oh, oh, what are they doing on the smoke fade? What are they doing on the smoke fade? This could be huge. Shelfie caught on the timing. Okay, re-smoke up. <laughs> Delaying our fun, but look what at this setup. There's on. three players stacked up for this monster fight. This is a wild fight. Flash. And there's a player oh, in con. H They're reading this so hard. Oh, there's a smoke fade. There's a couple kills coming through. Moon only does get one. Could allow them to, to alleviate, to bail out through Khan, and that's what they're going to do. He still got Winter up top there. Ready to shut things down. Minute on the clock. Winter. Going to be a big piece here. When do they float another player up top? Kaidi's thinking about it. And yeah, they're making the read. This will have been heard. That's brutal. Slow walk in. Does get them at least a chance to make a round of this. But they got to fumble the Uto. Gokushima trying to set up this take. Solo Dolo to allow his teammate to get forward. And Shalfi doesn't clear dice. Oh, someone died in the molly, though. That's, um... Interesting. For oh, sure. Oh, no. Gokushima's got a chance to clutch. Sawalio shuts it down. Just the spray through smoke finding him. Uh, yeah, Dex, I don't know what the hell happened there with the Molotov. I think that was just like a, like a, a dumpster molly. I don't know why he either ran through it or stood in it. They don't know what, what happened there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either. Maybe trying to just run in and, and panic to save his teammates could have cost him a whole lot more. They end up... Hold and steady. Just a smoke spam. Uh, seal the deal. It, it's four spies here. Fours. As much as I said, they, they can kind of afford to keep things conservative and keep the gun rounds up. They have a feeling. Gokushima. They'll be looking to lead the charge here with the AK, or at least try and trade with the AK. Maybe not be the helm. Run up long. They bypass the majority of this presence here. They're just going to have to get past... Kaide on the site right now, that's the big if. Problem is, without this bathroom presence, with how late Seltzer is waiting, well, now the teammate can come into support, so now you've got multiple rifles pointing this direction. Now this aggressive presence hasn't been punished. He'll punish it, but way too late. Way too late to do anything about this round. So it's disjointed there from Forza and uh, not so successful. Ruby, hold on. I mean, they, they had that aggressive bathroom setup. Just the long players couldn't get any impact. So Forza, this lead has dripped away still. I mean, it is overpass, to be honest. Five rounds T side of overpass already feels pretty damn good. If you can get anything else here, you're, you're feeling peachy keen. But Ruby are playing themselves back in here. They were looking a little lost in the early rounds. And finding their footing could be huge. Absolutely. It's also a little bit more coordinated on the defense here. Fast up connector. Ooh, blinded up by a flash from Kaide. That's that sort of coordination they're needing right now. As they go out towards this B-side, Moon just discards any sort of connector presence to help out this short side. Oh, man. <laughs> it's just so wild. So aggressive, but... More damage chunked off, and they've got a good idea of where these T's are, really. This one should be a breeze. They're just gonna blow over fours. Find themselves back to a tied scoreline. Leading in momentum into the second half could be good. Uh, I know we talked about what sort of direction Ruby's going to have. I imagine they don't have a lot planned for this second half. Yeah. But, uh, you know, maybe they can surprise us with some Ooh. good individual moments. Shelfie with the Deagle having some fun. Now they doesn't have to look at the mini-map, but quickly taken down. We are all knotted up, though. Who's going to take a lead in the second half? Could still be no one. We could get the 6 6. Question is asked of Forza now. Guns have come up on the other side. You've been a little stymied, a little stumped. What's the next arrow in your quiver? Bodkin? That's what they'll need in this one. Oh, 
it's not the aggression there. I thought the flash would lead him through the smoke and Kaido is committed. Ready. Again, just phasing the smoke. How do they walk away with the advantage here? Could even fight an extra Molotov bounce. Is it going to collect? Not quite. Tanir able to escape, but B is on notice right now. Still, uh -oh. though, further aggression comes through. Moon again with this AWP showing up. Panic sets in for Sololio. He needs to find this kill. He does. He spins nearly for the last, but enough damage done. Tanir with only 15 HP needs to win a clutch here. It seems so impossible. Even a bomb plant would be huge, giving themselves a chance in the last round. Molotov going to try and deny that. It's, it's, it's successfully, you'd imagine. And indeed, it is. Moon collects. Now we've got Ruby with a lead and the potential to double up on it headed into the half. It'll be a light buy. Mac-10s, Galils, Techies, perhaps. Forza, one last round. A six would make them feel real good. Again, if you just look at this half score line, you wouldn't be too worried, considering it's a T-side. Problem is, well, it's been one round since the first four for Forza. So this has been six of the last seven rounds won by Ruby and momentum is real. Especially for this team who looks like they can really take charge off of it. Looks like a roster who can really capitalize if you give them a little bit of room to work with. So closing out on seven to one towards the tail end of this is right what they're looking for. Even if they could put a scare on this uh, T side, they're going to have to dig deep. They're going to have to get those individuals back up and kicking. Dex was pretty effective on some of the entry prowess. Kaide's been playing a good map all around, or a good series rather. Looks like Forrest is going to look to end things towards this A side here. Potentially, these takes have been a little, little iffy at times, at moments. Moon a chance to flex. They're gonna play on the smoke fade, it seems like. This utility sailing out. Molly's well, trying to stymie me them, but there's the lineup. Oh no! That's disastrous winter! Bang on with that one still. Oh, the kills go in the favor of Forza. It was looking really helter-skelter for a moment there. Should be all right now, and the re-smoke up makes life difficult for Dex to get back through. Bomb now ticking away. There are kits. There's no real utility here, so they gotta find the kills. And there's no secret that there's presence coming from Bank. The way that a flank could be coming in. There's the footstep indeed. Got this long player first contact, not finding the kill, but they don't expect the player out by fence, so Shalfi gets the first, and now they're just focused in. Time is the issue, and Shalfi won't need it. Six all as we head to the half.
We're live into the fun, the action here. And it is a split score line to start. Now, logic would dictate that this should mean good things for fours, but logic has had little hold on this series, especially when Ruby's on the T side. But Kokushima, he's a logical sort. Nice opener in this pistol round. That's just that's pretty cross their placements. What that is right there, just right on the money. Someone slides on in. And all you got to do is press mouse one. It's that easy. That does set the tone a little bit sour for Ruby. Like you said, you might have to wipe logic aside here. At least to in the half, they're a little bit of a momentum stopper for fours. Now one round towards a tail end that worked out for them. Despite the five lost in a row. See if they can bring that energy into the pistol here. More aggression than a Goku Shima here. He's not stopping with one. He spots out even further players in the bathroom, which is such valuable information. Gets out of dodge, calls in for some extra help here. Now they got a long setup. So, so on the fly adaptation here, and he finds himself another one. This one going a bit sour here out of the gates. Ruby not able to take any space. But finally a kill. Not making any secret of this one. A lot of noise on the monster approach. This has been heard every step of the way, quite literally. Let's see if they can do anything about it. Uh, That'll a little do. Haggard there. <laughs> That'll that do. Actually, both kills come through for Forza. Yeah, that, that'll that'll do. That'll do. Don't put it in the highlight reel. Sure. Not everything has to be pretty. Just has to get the job done. They go straight into the force by here, Ruby. They love their force buys, and I love that. They like to keep the aggression rolling here. They don't slow down. They don't know how to here. Want to continue to spiral on forward. And see where that takes them. Jack nines in hand, eagles as well. They are all kind of hovering outside of a B pop here, so. Good idea right now. We'll see if they have the execution. Not quite. Not quite. They don't get past the... But just one player there. One kill on Assaulter. That's about it. They just get devastated on inbound. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shut down. No bomb plants here. No nothing really to invest into this round. Forza making money early. And now they'll get another round to run up the cash. So... Forza eating good to start out this map right now. Deeks, Deco, full Deco. I feel like we do not get a lot of full Decos anymore. Not a lot of teams are willing to play this fast and loose with their economy every round. In MR12, in this environment, in this economy. In this economy. You gotta say. Ah, Nate Chase. Oh, Nate's got, oh, it. got him. You got him. From the grave. Well, now we're maybe seeing why in this economy. The deco has fallen out of popularity. Dex! Woo! Woo! All right, got the first. A little bit of spice, a little bit of heat here. Mm. Still got a minute to cook, too. Who let him in the kitchen? What is he cooking? What is he cooking? Oh, I've seen this before. I've seen that angle before. You got to be pretty good to hold that angle, I feel. So don't try yeah. that in your pugs. Well, what about that one? Should I try that one on my pugs? No. Uh, uh, he, he died too, yeah. Because yeah, we all know, if you get the kill, it's worth it. If you do get the kill, it's worth it. Forza is certainly finding it worth it here. This is now two halves where they've had the clean start, right? They did it in the first half. Strong start. They did it here as well. Strong start. They're feeling good. Difference is this time they're on the what we would consider the stronger half. They've now got money in the tank for another buy. Presumably, they'll get pretty heavily invested in this one. They got the op up for Gokushima. That's the big piece. Let's see what they can do with it. Getting after right now. You can see damage. he's hungry, but yeah, so much early utility damage. This connector presence is a priority for both sides. Ruby putting a lot of emphasis on this ground as well. 
And that Molotov really puts a hurting on result at the beginning stages here. Goku Shima's op is still posted, kind of controlling short side, which, I mean, again, it, it can lead to a third player over towards A, an extra rotate, which can be necessary on this map. You, you oftentimes want to have three players on that A side if it's afforded to you. And so finally, we're seeing off the back of that information, a little slight rotate from Result, but also a fall off from Goku Shima. We've got 55 seconds left. This is still a very proactive CT defense. They're going to clear out A-side right now. No, Shelf has just done that. So now we probably will see a shift back from the A-side to B here soon from Result. Shelf, he calls it clear. Yeah, guys, I got nothing. Nada. He's going to push down Khan. He's going to go for the bold play. I mean, surely they're shuffling more players in here. Yep, he's going to have that quick flank. They've got all this information. Still, it is tough to stop a full hit. Gokushima, though, spotting the shadow. Not going to collect the first. Selter will instead. Now Gokushima under threat. Teammates with him. And the op is thriving. The rifle's thriving just a little bit more. Result puts up some numbers there at the end. And it is double digits on. Again, four players surviving. That's perhaps the most impressive aspect of this. Is just they ain't dying over on the Forza side, right? They ain't dying. They're just collecting money and rounds. Yeah, that's, I mean, just a really good read from Shelfie. I think he uh, does the heavy lifting in that round where you have four players turning that corner. You, you saw the potential highlight reel that was uh, gonna come through there from Gokushima on the op back pillar. We've seen so many hoppers do good work, but he's never required to do much when he has three rifles that stand right behind him, just chopping them through him, so. You know, it, it makes it so easy for him and the rest of his squad there because Shelfie he does gather that valuable info. And I, I think a key to success here on uh, Overpass, make sure that you can always maintain a little bit of info somewhere on this map. Whether it be towards that A side, whether it be towards B, doesn't matter how you find it, doesn't matter w what way you go about it here, but having some sort of extra edge on your opposition. Swalio got that extra edge. Yeah. By shooting result. That's the best, the best way to get the edge. Mm -hmm. This is the easiest way, that's for sure. Doesn't require much brain power, just aim and click. I think doesn't want the AK. Yeah, I'm not for sure he's collecting that AK. That was the whole fight up, smoke up. But no, they're just gonna leave that rifle there. Could be a blunder as well. When players come screaming through a monster and there's an extra AK down, I think Lasso agrees with me. That could be a problem. Shelfie backed off that angle. I think they want to go for this this monster pop. 57 seconds. They got flashes to go over. They're gonna do it. Oh, they're doing it. Extra rifle can, in fact, be gained, and that's a big kill towards the barrels. Now it's big problems, and that AK is right at the feet of Sawalio. You could have gotten rid of that so many times. Let's see if Sawalio can punish them for their hubris, for their oversight. There's no one short, so this bomb is going down, unless Tanir can do something magical. Oh. Tanir can, indeed. Wow. They line up. He never even saw the second player. He just got the kill regardless. Gets a third as well. Tanir doing it all for the squad right now. Bomb is indeed ticking away, but Tanir has recovered this from what looked to be a dire circumstance. Enter and Dex, what you got? Nothing right now. And it is indeed the comeback, the recovery. Yes, in isolation, you'd say that's a pretty good round considering what Ruby had to put into it. But the end result is still 11 on the board for Forza. And alongside that, they just don't have a lot of room here for round losses, right? We're, we're getting closer and closer to the finish line. You do good damage, you get a bomb plate. Yeah, that's all nice, but closer and closer to facing elimination here on the side of Ruby, despite what an incredible effort it was to get their heads into this game to start off well. It might have been necessary to get it done in two because, again, these newer rosters, sometimes that map pool, you know, you don't have it all fleshed out. So far, they just haven't gotten it.
completely in their pocket here. Shelfie again, more aggressive maneuvers here. Double up setup, and he's just getting some info here. Deep sight lines. Big fight to win from Tanir. This guy, barreling off the confidence of last round, continues it into the next. Ooh, there it is. A leg shot as well. He gets out of dodge. Safety on his escape. Flashbang to ensure it. He's out like a ghost with extra damage. And the 4v5. The cheekiness there. Shima, he wants one. Ready with the AWP. Pete gets the sight line. Oh, oh, right between his legs, though. So Moon is he going to keep things equal. Here's a guy we want more out of on the Moon side, right? I mean, he, he impressed us so much that first map. And a little fight since then. Harassment damage here, but a little bit bold from Tanir. Shafi has kept this in whack, kept this into the 2v2 in 24 seconds. This could be tough. There's a molly on Shelfy. I don't know how he deploys that is the problem. Connect your flank. getting her done with a rifle. Oh, you're right. The flank is everything. That's all they needed. And it is map point. Series point on for Forza. So after how tight, how competitive this series has been, it's looking like overpass could just be a wash. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this third map here could just be shut down. And that was a big concern heading into this one. And it does kind of look like uh, we were on the money there with some of the ideas coming into this, right? It's just maybe uh, for a new team, a, a recent formulation kind of leading in for this qualifier for some of their first officials. They just don't have the reps. They don't have the experience to take down a team like Fours on this map. It doesn't get any easier here. Shelfie goes one for one, though. And it's had enough to spread the defense then to give yourself some sort of advantage. The one for one still playing out pretty slow so far. This recycling of utility is not going to make the uh, B side execute attempts if it does come through any easier, though. They still have a Molly and Tanir as well. Be tossed in, disrupt. Long presence. Oh, Kushiba didn't shoot. Oh, no. He didn't shoot. He quick switched too fast and got complications. Coming through here, it's information though. It's a scare on this A side. They haven't shifted up the setup. There's still three players in the 4v4 on B, but a free pick onto Selter is going to help out a big time. Oh, oh flash. that flash is too good though. Result just levels them out, and they have to get through two more players on the site. Oh, it's looking over. There's no time. There's no time to spare. And Result's not letting them pass. Kaida, you have to go now. You do not have time to be flirting about with heaven. And it will be Tanir to escort him into heaven, into the next life. Forza, dominant, not dropping a round that second half. 13 to 6, just a battering. Show yeah. us why they were the favorite coming into this one. Move on here at the IEM Chengdu 2024 close qualifier. Woo.